Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. I am finally filming my recommendations video for the Paranormal Romance Readathon and I'm also combining my TBR for the readathon here. So lots of paranormal romances to talk about today but first if you missed the announcement for the Paranormal Romance Readathon I'll leave a link to my video down below. It includes all the details, all the prompts, anything you need to know about the readathon is there. I love paranormal romances. It was my gateway into the romance genre. I pretty much inhaled and devoured all the really popular long series PNRs like J.R. Ward, Janine Frost, um, Nalini Singh, Larissa Ione, Gina Showalter. So many of my first romance authors were paranormal romance authors. So I have a lot of love for this subgenre and I'm so so glad that we're doing this readathon. I'll start with my TBR for the week. It's a pretty long TBR but it is a week-long readathon so it's it probably is okay, plus I'm listening to a couple audios so it should balance out. So the first one is of course our buddy read The Power of Hades by Eliza Rain and Rose Wilson. This is a Greek mythology retelling on Hades and Persephone. It counts for the Faded Mate Square and the Indie Romance Square. And then the next book on my TBR is Alpha Knight by Nalini Singh. I am such a terrible fan. I still haven't read this one. I haven't gotten to my arc yet, but I guess I've been saving it for this readathon. Um, I'm so excited. This is book four in her Psy Changeling Trinity series, which is a spin-off of her original Psy Changeling series. Alpha Knight will count for the Has an Animal Square. The heroine is a wolf shifter. She's actually the alpha wolf of her pack. And it's another Faded Mates romance. Honestly, a ton of paranormal romances will count as Faded Mates. And then I have an Arc, Layla by Colleen Hoover. This is her first paranormal romance book, but I have absolutely no idea what kind of paranormal romance it is, so I don't even know what squares I could cross off for this one, but I am excited to read it and see Colleen Hoover's take on a paranormal romance. Next on my TBR is Wicked Bite by Janine Frost. This is book two in her Night Rebel series. This series is all about Ian. I actually started a couple chapters into this. Um, it's an art copy that I also never finished, but I'm pretty much using this readathon as an excuse to catch up on all my arcs. It's a spin-off of the Night Huntress world, which is all about vampires, so this crosses off the vampire square. I also borrowed a bunch of books from my library, including a couple audiobooks. I got Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. This is an indie romance, um, a novella, and it's got an animal with a werewolf hero. It's also Halloween themed, um, which is perfect. I got Pride Mates by Jennifer Ashley. I love her historical romances and I've been wanting to read her PNRs for the longest time. I even own a couple of them um, but they're later on in the series. I don't have book one so I borrowed it from the library. Pride Mates is book one in the Shifters Unbound series. It counts for the Faded Mates Square, sadly not published before 2010. It published right during 2010 and it counts for the Has an Animal Square with our shifter hero. Some audiobooks that I borrowed are The Last Wolf by Maria Vale. I've heard some good things about this one. It is a wolf shifter romance so it has an animal square. Hopefully I'll finally get to it with this audio. And then I have a reverse harem romance with Queen Takes Knights. This is an indie romance by Jolie Sue Burkhart. It's a first in a series virgin vampire queen and her two vampire knight protectors. This one counts for vampire, indie, faded mates, and also LGBTQ. Um, I do believe our hero are by. I'm also gonna try to read another Nalini Singh book, Archangel Sun, which is another arc. It's out next month, I believe, and it's the newest book in the Guild Hunter series, which is all about angels. So that book will cross out the angel square. These last two, I'm not entirely sure I'll be getting to them, but I will try to squeeze them in. First is Raven Song by TJ Klune. This is book two in his Green Creek series that I was supposed to buddy read with a friend and I never ended up finishing it. So this one is a second chance romance. It's MM, Wolf Shifters. So it'll cross out the LGBTQ square, um, the indie romance square, and has an animal square. And then the last book is another audio that I borrowed from my library. It's How to Marry a Millionaire Vampire by Carolyn Sparks. This is a series that has been on my TBR for years since I actually started reading PNRs. It was published before 2010, 2005, so it'll count for that square. And of course, it'll count for the vampire square. With this TBR, I can pretty much almost cross off all the squares on the bingo card, except for a book with dark in the title. 
I might find something and squeeze it in if I have time. Probably not, but we'll see. Moving on to my recommendations part of this video. I did do a few recommendations on the announcement video. I recommended one book for each category on the bingo. Um, but I'm doing some more today. For the novella square, my previous recommendation was The Story of Sun by J.R. Ward. I still recommend it. It's so good. That one also counts for Vampire and published before 2010. I also recommend Hot as Hades by Alicia Rye. This one is a little bit tricky because it's no longer published. You can't technically buy this, but if you're lucky, your library might have a copy. My library actually does. This is a Hades, Persephone, novella retelling and I loved it. I'm so sad she hasn't republished it yet. I know she said that she wants to but I guess she's just never gone to it yet. Hopefully one day but definitely check if your library has a copy because if you love Hades and Persephone retellings like I do you definitely need to read this. I'm also recommending The Headmaster by Tiffany Rice. This is like a gothic romance. It is paranormal but you won't really find out like how paranormal it is until the very end. It's such a fantastic novella, very steamy like Tiffany Rice always is. The heroine discovers an academy for boys um, and she falls in love with the headmaster and all the students are absolutely adorable. I reread this one uh, pretty recently, loved it again cried at the end again. Ruby Dixon also has some paranormal romance novellas, the Bear Bite series. She actually has a box set um, for 99 cents called Shift with all five of the novellas in the series. They're all big burly bear shifters. They're a lot of fun. They are very quick and very hot. And then my last novella recommendation is The Big Bad Wolf's X by Tanya Brooks. I actually love this novella because I love the groveling here. I reread it specifically specifically for the groveling. It's a second chance romance. The paranormal aspect of it um, is a bit lacking, but I still enjoy it so much. We have a wolf shifter alpha who, after finding out his mate got pregnant, um, he doesn't believe her because he got a vasectomy years ago and there's absolutely no way that kid could be his. So he dumps her, throws her out, breaks her heart. And the groveling part is when he's trying to beg for forgiveness and win her back. When he realizes that that no, that kid is actually his. For the Faded Mate Square, there are a million and one Faded Mates romances that are paranormal romances. You could probably literally just search Faded Mates on Amazon and get a whole bunch of them. Um, but my previous recommendation was the Psy Changeling series by Nalini Singh. It is my top favorite paranormal romance series. Book one is Slave to Sensation. If you haven't read it yet, please, please do. This is actually my third top favorite in the series. My second favorite is Kiss of Snow, and then number one, Heart of Obsidian. But those are later on in the series, books 10 and 12. This series, well, most of the series, it also does count for the Has an Animal Square, because many of the main characters um, are shifters. This hero in Slave to Sensation is a panther shifter. He is the alpha of a pack of leopards. There's also a wolf pack featured in the series as well. Um, book 10, Kiss of Snow, which is my second favorite. That hero is the alpha of the wolf pack. I have my two other favorites in these beautiful hardcovers. And also like that Ruby Dixon series, if you want more bear shifters, Silver Silence is an amazing one. I love it so much. The hero is a teddy bear, literally. Another Faded Mates romance series is the Immortals After Dark series by Cressley Cole. This is another one of my favorites. I actually discovered it fairly late, like two years ago. I actually read the prequel to the series years ago, but I didn't like it, so I never continued with it. And then I randomly decided to read Lothair, a book 10, I believe, um, and it's now my favorite of the series, but I really liked this one the first time I read it. It was a four star read for me. And then I finally decided to actually read the series from the beginning. Book one is A Hunger Like No Other. And then I reread that prequel novella um, and enjoyed it so much more after reading this first book. So if you do 
do start the series, I would recommend starting with The Hunger Like No Other and not the prequel novella. And then when I got to Lothair for the second time, loved it, gave it five stars, so so good. One of my favorite vampire romances ever. But this series is very much Faded Mates. We have alpha possessive heroes who go crazy for their heroines. I remember the reason why I wanted to read this one was because Sarah McLean talked about it on Faded Mates, how the hero who was in captivity, he smelled his mate um, and literally ripped off his limb um, that was chained down to get to her. So that's the craziness you can expect from Cresley Cole. You have all types of paranormal creatures in the series, mostly Valkyrie heroines, but there's a ton of demons, shapeshifters, vampires, fae, witches, ghosts, literally everything is in this series. It's also crazy hot because Cresley Cole cannot write a non-smutty book, so if you love a lot of smut, a lot of steam in your romances, you need to be reading Cresley Cole. If you love aliens, there is the Ice Planet Barbarian series that has Faded Mates, classic alien sci-fi romance series. My favorites were the first two books. I still remember when they released in serial format and I would be so excited every Friday um, when a new installment would release. I kind of stopped reading after like 10 books but the ones I read I really really enjoyed. And then for a lesser known series is the Eternal Mate series by Felicity Heaton. Book one is Kissed by a Dark Prince, uh, which I remember loving. It's got a fey elf hero. He's the prince of all elves. There's also a bunch of demons and shapeshifters throughout the series. Um, they're all pretty much standalones. And I think the later books also count for novellas. I remember them getting a bit short, but I would also recommend book three, Tempted by a Rogue Prince, which was my favorite. We have the dark other prince of the elves who got lost and went a little bit crazy. The hero pretty much went mad after being in captivity and controlled by this evil witch for centuries. I remember it being so angsty and so good. And then for the vampire romance square, we have the classic Black Dagger Brotherhood series by J.R. Ward. Dark Lover is book one. Book two, Lover Eternal, is my favorite. Um, though I do love book three as well, which is most people's favorites. There is this year's very popular release from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a vampire romance. Um, it is a fantasy romance, but I'm still gonna count it for the Vampire Square. This is one of my favorite releases of the year. The series is so, so good. Janine Frost also has has three vampire romance series. Technically, two of them are spin-offs of the original. The original is the Night Huntress series. Book one is Halfway to the Grave. This is about Cat and Bones, who are classics, a classic couple in the PR subgenre. The heroine is a half vampire who goes out and kills actual full-blooded vampires. And the hero is Bones, our sexy British vampire. And then the first spin-off of that series is the Night Prince series. This is all about Vlad, who who is literally Dracula. Also a bonus, Paranormal Romance Step Back. This series is my favorite so far. I love it. I love Vlad and Layla even more than Cat and Bones, mainly because Vlad is just so dark and so hot. And then the latest spinoff is all about Ian, who has been our man whore, playboy charmer of the series. His series is the Night Rebel series. Book one is Shades of Wicked. Book two was the one that was on my TBR. It's a marriage of convenience, vampire romance, and just a lot of fun. Also another old vampire romance that released ages ago is Kristen Ashley's Until the Sun Falls from the Sky. It's the first book in her The Three series. Um, I love the first two books. The first one is this vampire one. The second one is a werewolf shifter one. But I do love these two books. I loved old Kristen Ashley. They are long but so entertaining and they also definitely count for the Faded Mate Square. And then for the indie romance square, I mentioned um, Reborn Yesterday. I think I counted it for the Vampire Square in the last video but it also counts for the indie romance. Ghost Walk by Cassandra Gannon which was my recommendation in the other video. The Three series by Kristen Ashley that I just talked about also indie romance. The Green Creek series by TJ Klune. 
the Eternal Mate series by Felicity Heaton. But for some other indie romances that I haven't talked about yet, I have Waking the Beast by Lacey Thorne. And yes, this author has the same name as me. This book is the first in her Awakening Pride series, and I remember enjoying it so, so much. It was so hot, very smutty. If you want to shift a romance with a hero who turns into a lion, who is a very, very primal and animalistic, definitely try this one out. The whole series is just some great, great smut. This other indie romance is one that I haven't read yet, um, but I still want to include it because it sounds so good. It's by Katie Roberts. It is a Sacrifice, the first book in her Bloodline Vampire series, the first novella. Um, it's like a series of novellas. It is a polyamorous paranormal romance. It is MMMF. Um, again, I haven't read it yet. I might save it until the entire series is out so I can binge it. Don't have to deal with the cliffhangers. For the Has an Animal Square, the one I recommended before was Cry Wolf by Patricia Briggs, the whole Alpha and Omega series. I've already talked about a whole bunch of shifter romances that are mostly like werewolf shifters, but I have read and loved a bunch of dragon shifter romances if you're into that. Dragonbound by Thea Harrison is a great one. It's also Faded Mates. The heroine is half human, half dragon. She falls in love with the most powerful dragon shifter. She ends up stealing from him and he's like, I can't believe you're crazy enough to do that, but then the Faded Mates kicks in. It's great. I really like this one. There's also the Dragonkin series by G.A. Aiken. Book one is Dragon Actually and I loved it. It is a really, really funny book. A really funny series. G.A. Aiken, who is also known as Shelley Lawrenston, she writes a lot more lighthearted paranormal romances. But in Dragon Actually, we have a dragon hero. The heroine is a warrior, a very bloodthirsty warrior kills a ton of people and just terrifies men in general. If you love reading about a bloodthirsty, crazy warrior heroine, you definitely need to read this one. I'm also recommending Taste of Darkness by Katie Roos. This one, we have a dragon shifter hero who is also a virgin hero, mainly because he's been trapped and in prison for a thousand years in hell. Once he gets out, he meets the werewolf heroine who is a sweetheart. It's friends to love they become amazing friends and she basically guides him into modern society because he has no idea what's going on in the 21st century. It was such a sweet romance but also there's a ton of action as well. It was just a very good, very underrated romance. For some LGBTQ romances, I recommended Wolf Song by TJ Klune. I sadly haven't read too many LGBTQ paranormal romances besides like Lover at Last by J.R. Ward, but a few that are on my TBR. Uh, one is Alistair by Ella Frank. This is an MM vampire romance. This author is one that I've been wanting to read for a long time. When I saw that she wrote like a vampire romance, I got really excited, but never read it. I was also looking around and found the Vampire Sorority Sister series by Rebecca Weatherspoon. It's an FF vampire romance set in college. She ends up getting involved in this mysterious sorority that turns very king and very bloody. For some angel romances, the Guilt Hunter series is a classic. The series has angels, archangels, there's also a couple vampires and shifters as well, but mostly angels and it's great. I love it. Another angel I've read and loved is Reaver by Larissa Ion. It is book 10 in the Demonica series, which is such a good series. Highly recommend it, uh, but yeah, it's pretty deep, but it is such a good book. We have an angel hero, a fallen angel heroine. It could technically be read as a standalone. Each book in the series is about a different couple, but for this book I would recommend reading the series in order just because a lot of things do culminate in this book, like the heroine's whole identity. She's been an anti-heroine for almost the entire series. There is, however, a novella in the series that you can read as a standalone. It is Azagoth. The hero is the Grim Reaper and he ends up falling for an angel who is his fated mate. She also has the ability to time travel. It's a great novella, very fun and steamy, highly recommend it. There's also the Angels of the Dark series by Gina Showalter that I haven't read, um, but it does sound good. It's like a spin-off or part of her Lords of the Underworld series. So if you're looking for some more angel romances, maybe look that one up. And then for some books with dark in the title, I've mentioned a couple from my recommendations. Dark Lover by J.R. Ward, Taste of Darkness by Katie Roos, Kissed by a Dark Prince, by Felicity Heaton. My recommendation from the last video was The Dark Highlander
Sister by Karen Marie Monning. But for some other ones that I just grabbed off of my shelves, Gina Showalter has so many books with Dark in the title because her Lords of the Underworld series, every book I think has Dark or Darkest in the title. Cresley Cole also has a ton of books with Dark in the title in her Mortals After Dark series, Dreams of a Dark Warrior, Pleasure of a Dark Prince, Dark Needs at Night's Edge, and Dark Desires After Dusk. And for the last category published before 2010, a lot of the classic series definitely count. Um, Black Dagger Brotherhood started in 2005, Psy Changeling started in 2006, Immortals After Dark series also started in 2006, Night Huntress series was 2007, and then for the Highlander series by Karen Marie Monning, this is like a historical time travel paranormal romance series. These ones started in 1999. There's also the Fever series by Karen Marie Monning that started in 2006. Book one, Dark Fever, I forgot to include for the dark titles. I will say though, the series is more urban fantasy, so the romance is very, very slow burn and develops over five books. Lords of the Underworld series, book one is The Darkest Fire. That one started in 2008. And for a new series that I haven't talked about yet, it is the Nightwalker series by Jacqueline Frank. I've only read book one, Jacob, but I enjoyed it a lot. This one released in 2006. Jacob is a Nightwalker. Nightwalkers are basically demons, but his job is an enforcer to stop demons from lusting over humans, from mating with humans, which is forbidden. But of course, his fated mate is none other than a human. I remember liking this one a lot when I read it. I'm not sure why I never continued on with the series, but it is another pre-2010 book. So those are all the recommendations I have for the Paranormal Romance Readathon. Let me know if you've read any of these books, and of course, if you're joining us at the end of the month, um, let me know your TBR. I hope you enjoyed these Paranormal Romance recommendations. Links for all the books that I mentioned are down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!